Hey guys, happy Monday. Um, so today I wanted to go live and show you guys a couple of different shoulder mobility drills that I usually add into my practice and that I work with clients. So um, I'll show you a couple of things and you, if you have the props available right now, feel free to do it with me now or I'll post it to IGTV so that you can follow along later. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna get into some shoulder flossing. So if you wanna join me, go for it. Um, you just need either a yoga strap or you can use a resistance band, um, a tie, a belt, kind of just like whatever you have. Um, and so I usually start pretty wide, but you'll take the arms overhead, find the spot where you have a little bit of like restriction and then go slow through that spot and take it back up and all the way over. So what you're looking for is the wrists not like folding in, they're, they're pretty straight. You're not bending through the elbows. Um, and if you find that that's really challenging, you'll go a little bit wider instead. If it's really easy, you can come in a little bit closer and then take it over. So you'll feel this stretch in the front of your shoulder, um, but it's good for shoulder mobility. If you have an injury, obviously with any of these, ask your uh, physical therapist or your doctor first, but this is a good one to add in. Um, and I usually do this about 10 times. Um, another drill, I'm gonna show you guys this with a resistance band. Um, this is called bird wings, and it's used to strengthen your serratus muscles, the muscles underneath your underarms. You can do this without. You can do this literally just hugging your elbows in and rotating out. Um, but as you're starting to build some strength, it might be nice to use a small resistance band like this guy or um, a bigger resistance band like this guy. And if you're using a bigger one, you basically just want to like wrap your hands in it about as far apart as you'd like. And you can either work just one arm at a time or possibly both arms at the same time. When you're working bird wings, the most important thing to think of is your elbow placement. You wanna make sure you're right into the ribs, not coming too far back, but you're in the frontal ribs. And if you watch, like my elbow never separates away from the ribs. If your elbow does separate out, what happens is your traps, which are pretty strong muscles for most people, those just take over. They're more than capable of rotating the shoulder and you won't actually feel any engagement where you want it, which is um, underneath the underarm. So we've done flossing, we've done bird wings. Um, one more drill that I love to do is IYT. This is with a resistance band. And um, I've seen this on like physical therapy videos and stuff, um, but I learned it just like through teaching yoga. But basically arms are straight out from the shoulders and you want to engage that same serratus muscle um, on the arm that's not working. So for me, my right arm is going to be not working. Arm is straight out from the shoulder and the shoulder blade is hugged down and squeezed against the ribs. Now my left arm is going to be doing the work. And so it's called IYT because you'll take the arm up to like a letter I, out to a letter Y, and then straight out to a letter T. Um, and again, you wanna watch, just like with flossing, you wanna watch your wrist, make sure again, you're not like bending in or out. You're just going straight up, straight out to the side, and then right out into a letter T. All right, so usually you would do like 10 on one arm and 10 on the other, or if you're still building strength or healing from an injury, just do like three to five, see how you feel, and if you want to do more, obviously do more. All right, so flossing, bird wings, IYT. The next one that I'm gonna show you guys is a little bit more advanced, um, well, next two anyway. And they're coming from a yoga pose. The first one is an active child's pose and then the second one is a puppy pose with external rotation. For both of these, you don't necessarily need blocks. Um, again, if you're like working on the mobility, but if you've got pretty solid flexibility and strength, you can do this on blocks just to make it a little bit more challenging. I wanna make sure you can actually see the blocks. I'm pretty sure you can. All right, so I'll show you the child's pose one first. You're basically in child's pose, but with arms straight out on top of blocks or not. And the action is to lift the arms away from the ground. So you're trying to keep the rib cage closed, forehead on the mat, and then lift. So I'll show you what that would look like. Forehead down, arms straight out from the shoulders, and then on your exhale, lift up, and then lower back down. It looks super easy, but if you try it, you do feel like there's quite a bit of engagement happening and again, if you feel like you've got pretty solid mobility, you can work from higher, same thing, and just lifting away. Obviously, I got way less <laughs> lift on that second one because the blocks are higher. Um, 
All right, next one is an active puppy pose. And this you can add into your practice literally anytime you're working back bends, and especially when you're working um, Pincha Mayurasana or forearm stand. This has been a game changer for Pincha for me. So puppy pose, you're starting out with knees over hips, and then walking hands forward onto the blocks. Then you're usually sinking your chest down, maybe even letting the rib cage flare. But in this case, you wanna hug the ribs a little bit away from the ground. And my bad, I totally <laughs> did not set that up right. You want your elbows on the blocks. Elbows are on the blocks and hands are in a prayer shape. Then the action is gonna be to externally rotate or pull the hands apart. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you'll come down into puppy, engage through your core, and then pull the hands apart and take them back in. Pull apart and take them back in. So you might have like seen my shoulders and my arms shaking as I pull apart. It looks so much easier than it feels. So yeah, um, that's another one that you can do. That one I wouldn't necessarily recommend if you are rebuilding from like an injury, but again, if you're trying to work on a forearm balance or pinch that's a really great drill to add in. All right, so we've done several drills now. You can easily add this into your warm up, right? You start to warm up your shoulders, warm up your active flexibility as well as passive. Um, one more drill I'm gonna show you guys, you don't need any props at all for, and this is really easy to insert into a flow. Like if you're standing in warrior two or standing in warrior one, you can always do something with your arms. So I'm gonna stay seated, but pretend you can be up in warrior two if you wanna be. Um, we're gonna go into Gomukhasana arms, but instead of going slow, you're gonna, or instead of just like going quickly into it, you're gonna slow it down and work on mobility the whole time. So I'm gonna face sideways so you can see where my arms go. One arm is down, one arm is up. Draw the rib cage in, take a breath in, and then on your exhale, press your arms back as far as you can without letting the rib cage flare forward. So keep this in, and then reach back to your range of motion. And then I usually stay for about three breaths right here. So inhale, exhale, reach back to your range. Hold that range, inhale, exhale, reach back. Usually each time you find just a little bit more space. And then you'll start to bend your elbows without letting your hands touch your back. That's the hard part. So you're still drawing the elbows back to that range while keeping the hands reaching towards each other. You're gonna to start to feel this in your biceps and you do wanna squeeze your biceps to get the hands closer together. I'm gonna to face back so you can see. So after you've been here for a couple breaths, usually what we do is we like wiggle the hands towards each other, but instead you'll slide your hands towards each other and then keep the palms open so that you're still working and squeeze to get the hands closer together rather than grabbing. All right, so that's another one you can really easily add into your practice if you're starting to work on shoulder mobility. Um, that one is actually great for working into back bends. So if you are practicing wheel later on in your practice or if you're a teacher and you're sequencing that as your peak, that is a really good way to actively work your students' range of motion so that they can get ready for wheel pose. All right, so if you are still with me, if you got any questions, drop them in here. And then if not, I'll just keep giving you guys more drills. Let's see, so I don't see any questions. So, all right, cool, no questions. Perfect, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple more drills that you can work on, um, just for fun, why not? Hello, <laughs> let me know if you have questions. I'll keep checking back on the screen to see if you guys do. Um, so a couple of other drills. One of them that I really like is a prone drill. So you're laying down on your belly, um, kind of similar to going into Shalabhasana or Locust, but you're doing different arm variations. So the one that we did earlier with the resistance band was called IYT. This is called ATY and it's great for posture, really great for um, shoulder pain. A lot of our shoulder pain does not come from tight muscles. It comes from uh, poor posture and a weak upper back. So we will strengthen the upper back by going into this drill. Basically lying down prone on your belly. You'll take your arms into the shape of a letter A, which is down by your sides. You'll lift the arms out into a letter T, lift the arms, and then a letter Y and lift the arms. I'm gonna show you guys the arm positions before I lay down, just so that if you're doing this at home, you can get it. Um, and get it right. <laughs> so for A, I have palms facing down. You can be in a fist, whatever feels good. For T, I have usually hands in a fist or just open, again, palms facing down. But when you get to Y, you're gonna wanna let your hands 
instead of be facing down to rotate slightly. So almost like if you were, um, if you have like a fist with your thumbs up, your fist will be, or your thumb rather, will be facing towards the ceiling. Um, and I'm seeing some things. Okay, cool, no questions. So I'm gonna keep going. All right, so you'll lay on your belly for this one. And I'll just show you where you wanna be. Basically, make sure there's no pain in the lower back. So you're lengthening the tailbone down and pushing into the tops of your feet. For letter A, your forehead is down. And then again, you're just lifting up high as you can. Squeeze the shoulder blades at the top. Take it down for T. I don't have quite enough space. But for T, same thing. Lift up, squeeze the shoulder blades at the top and down. And then Y. Thumbs are up. Lift up, squeeze the shoulder blades to go higher. And then come back down. So usually I would do like 10 in A, 10 in T, and 10 in Y. All right, let's see. And that is really good. Oh, thanks. That's really good if you are um, working on things like King Cobra or like, what is that? Not Sphinx. Yeah, King Cobra. <laughs> or King Pigeon, rather, where your feet are coming towards the top of your head. All right. So if there's no other questions, I will show you guys a couple more drills. Let's see. Okay, no questions so far. Um, but somebody's being gross, so can I kick you out? E cannot kick you out, that's okay. All right, <laughs> so a couple other drills. Um, coming into a tabletop position, you can do like just scapular engagement. Um, the four movements of the scapula are protraction, which is like pressing the spine back between the shoulder blades, spreading the shoulder blades apart. Retraction, which is drawing the shoulder blades together. Elevation, shoulder blades coming up towards the ears. And depression, shoulder blades coming down towards the hips. So you can do that in a tabletop position, side plank and all kinds of places. But basically it is protraction, almost like you're going into cat pose, but not quite. Retraction, kind of like how, but again, not coming into a full back bend, just that squeeze. And then elevation, shoulder blades up, and depression, shoulder blades down. So if you do have a lot of shoulder pain, adding in those four movements can be really helpful and just finding like scapular squeezes can be really helpful for strengthening your upper back. Um, ATY is one other way to strengthen your upper back, basically by doing scapular squeezes, but from a prone position. All right, any other questions before I log out? Oh, okay. Um, so no questions, some funky comments. You guys are, you guys are special. <laughs> All right, so if there are no questions, let me see. Oh, I do have one more drill for you guys. I almost forgot. You got a question? Let me know, type it in here. <laughs> Let's see, your left shoulder. What's going on with your shoulder? Well, I'm gonna set up the last drill that I wanna show you guys while you type out the rest of your response. So you can do this again with a block or with nothing at all. I'm gonna show you with a block. This way is gonna be a little bit more advanced, um, but you can absolutely work strength without using the block. All right, so this one, it's a little bit awkward to get the block between your elbows, but then you've got the block and you'll take it up to a 90 degree angle. Then you're gonna take a breath into your upper back. Hold your breath, plug your arm bones back into the shoulder socket. So you're just taking the arms back, still staying in that 90 degree shape. And then shoulder blades down, still keeping the arms the same. On your exhale, you'll draw the elbows forward and then lift up slightly. All right, so that's one way to do it. Inhale, hold the breath, arms back, shoulder blades down. Exhale, arms forward and squeeze in. And then one more way to add even more strength to really get to the serratus muscles is to, after you've done your whole thing, to pull the hands apart while maintaining the squeeze of the block. So that's a really fun one. And that's another one where if you're working for strength um, in pincha, it can be, so one of the things that happens in pincha is the hands start to slide together or the elbows slide apart. And that's basically these muscles not engaging enough to hold shape. All right. Now I see comments coming through, so let's see. <laughs> Other drills to do at home to build strength. Yes, that one. Subscapular gets a pinch with retraction. 
Let's see. Um, okay. So it could be a lot of things. Um, have you by any chance had like an MRI on it to see what it is? Because it, it could be something simple, like you could have an adhesion, which is basically just a tight muscle, um, but it, it could be something else. It could be something like arthritis or, uh, yeah, I would definitely have a doctor check it out to find out exactly what it is. And then um, once you know what it is, you'll be able to find different ways to work with it. Mm, okay. And nothing, oh, nothing's wrong with it. Okay. But you're still feeling that weird, like, pinchy feeling when you are retracting. Um, so a couple things that you can work on if there's nothing, like, medically wrong with it. Um, oh, thank you. Is um, try flossing, but I want you to not go to a point where you're even feeling much of a stretch at all. Like, when you're doing your flossing, keep your arms super wide and just kind of work with letting the scapula, letting the shoulder blades move however they feel like they need to move. Then after that, try that retraction again and see if it's still bothering you. Um, the other thing is when you are retracting your shoulder blades, like rather than trying to keep them down or up or whatever, just work with wherever they are and just find the squeeze um, and see if you're still feeling it. Let's see. Mm. All right, and if you're working on crow pose, so a lot of these shoulder drills are gonna be good for uh, crow pose. Crow pose, you need a lot of shoulder protraction. So that thing that we did in tabletop where you're pressing the spine back, basically you're doing that and then also using your core to lift your body up. Yeah, absolutely, and DM me if you have questions about it, if you try it and like something changes or doesn't change, let me know. I'd love to like work on this. This is my, this is my jam, finding out like ways to make things feel better. Um, but yeah, so for crow pose, lots of core work. Um, I will give you one drill that you can do while you're working on the, on the strength for crow. Um, and it's basically starting out almost like you're going into crow. So hands on the mat first to get your, uh, your base, which is your hands settled, and then place something like a block underneath your feet. Then from there, protract your shoulders and use your hip flexor strength to squeeze your knees as high as you can. Then from there, work on sending the weight forward into your fingertips until it's scary, and then back. And then same thing, protract, squeeze, forward until it's scary. And eventually you might find that you can like lift one foot, take it back down, lift the other foot, take it back down, and keep working that until it feels like, like you got it. Um, the other thing to do with crow is to work with like a pillow or something in front of your face. Usually crow pose, it, it's not strength that you need. It's like trust in yourself. So, all right. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that those help. All right, guys, any last questions? Otherwise I'm going to log out. If not, I'll give you guys a second. All right. I'm gonna head out, but if you do have any questions after this, DM me or you can just comment on the IGTV either way. All right, bye guys, have the best day. Thank you.